The invites are out and the countdown to WWDC 2020 is officially on. This year's developers conference will be unlike any we've ever seen. Sadly, that means we won't be meeting in San Jose in person as in previous years. But the silver lining is that more people will be able to attend because A, it's free and B, it's virtual so you really don't have to go anywhere. The event will kick off on June 22nd with a keynote at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time followed by a series of developers sessions throughout the week. Location, the interweb. Well. Specifically, the keynote you can watch through the Apple Events app on Apple TV if you have it, or you can log on to apple.com and go to the Apple Events section. Now for the developer sessions, you will have to download the developer's app, or you can also log on through the developer's website. What did strike me about the invite is that it doesn't mention live keynote in any part of it. So it makes me think that it might have been pre-taped, which not gonna lie, it takes a little bit of the excitement away because it's something we've gotten used to throughout the years, but I guess without a live audience, it really doesn't make a difference. Either way, we're still expecting the same announcements, specifically that fresh batch of software updates and maybe a few surprises. So let me break it down. There's been a lot of information out there about what to expect in iOS 14. In fact, we just did a video all about iOS 14 and I'll link that on the bottom if you wanna check out more details. I'm just gonna go over a few of the highlights and a lot of these are based off of leaks of an early version of the software. With that said, one of the most important things is a change coming to the home screen which would allow you to sort apps in a list view, not just the traditional grid view, but list view and you'd be able to sort them according to popularity or notifications or alphabetically like on the Apple Watch. Another big change is that you'll finally be able to change Apple's default apps to third-party apps, yay! So, you know, Google Maps or Spotify or whatever it is that you've been dying to change. And then some changes to messages, including the ability to mention someone directly in a group chat with an at, like in Slack or in WhatsApp, and also the ability to take back a text, yay! And the iPhone may finally get multitasking features, which is great because our screens are getting bigger and we just need more stuff to do. I don't know if this is gonna include picture-in-picture -picture viewing, but I'm really hoping for that as well. And we can also include some accessibility features and some changes in Safari, including the ability to translate text and perhaps some Apple Pencil support. Apple Pencil is supposed to be getting its own platform for developers to develop their own apps for Apple's stylus. Now, related to Apple Pencil, iPadOS is apparently getting more MacBook-like capabilities, and that includes advanced cursor support. And we're getting two new apps, both on iPad and on the iPhone. That includes a augmented reality app and a fitness app. The fitness app is for guided workouts and that's gonna come also to watchOS and tvOS. And you're probably gonna hear me talking more about it as we delve into those updates as well. Best of all though, this update is said to be compatible with all devices running iOS 13, which means our older devices won't be left out this time. We've also been hearing a lot of rumors about the Apple Watch. Now here it gets a little bit tricky because it's hard to know what's an Apple Watch Series 6 rumor and what is a Watch OS 7 rumor. But I'm still gonna go through them so that you can decide. First off, we have sleep tracking. 2020 might be the year that we get native sleep tracking on the Apple Watch. Finally, we've been seeing a lot of rumors about this some leaked screenshots of what it would look like on the watch, but we're still not sure whether Apple can pull it off with a software update or whether that Apple Watch would need a bigger battery. The other health feature that is still TBD is SpO2 tracking or tracking your blood oxygen levels. This would be especially helpful during this health crisis that we're having. However, again, Apple may need a new sensor on the watch and that might not be coming till October or September with that new Apple Watch Series 6. But it's true that Apple can already monitor your VO2 max or your maximum uh, oxygen consumption during exercise, so it might just require a software update. Here's hoping that it does. And lastly, a mental health feature. This goes beyond the meditation app, the Breathe app that Apple already has. And again, this would be very, very timely to have. 
I'm curious to see what a mental health feature on the Apple Watch would look like. Now, even if we don't get these health features, rest assured, Apple will give us more fitness features on the Apple Watch, including that new fitness app that I mentioned previously that's also coming to iOS, iPadOS, and tvOS, and this would be to access workouts on your wrist. We'll also get new watch faces. This is something we expect every year. No watch face store yet, at least not that I've heard about, but you will have more options, including some flag options. You'll also have a tachymeter option. You'll be able to share your Apple Watch face through AirDrop, and you'll be able to configure a shared album as your Apple Watch face, which would be nice just to have different photos of your family members pop up as people add them, especially during these social distancing times. And speaking of families, parents are getting more control over their kids' Apple Watches, or they'll be able to give their kids an Apple Watch without giving them an iPhone as well, because you'll be able to configure a new Apple Watch from a parent account and set certain limits on different app usage, specifically during school time hours. Rumors about specific features of macOS 10.16 have been few and far between, at least compared to rumors about iOS 14 or watchOS 7. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to be a big year for the Mac. First off, we are going to get the next software update coming after Catalina, and I can guarantee you it will be another landmark. And secondly, because there's a big rumor that Apple will be announcing that it's moving to using its own chips for the Mac, and this is rumored to come alongside a new iMac. Now, it's not ridiculous to think that Apple is going to have hardware at this event. Last year, they announced that new Mac Pro, which came alongside that ridiculously expensive display, and this year could be no different. We're also hearing talk about new AirPods, those over-the-ear AirPods, rumored to be called the AirPods Studio, that HomePod Mini that we've been hearing about for a long time that still hasn't arrived, and those tile tracker competitors codenamed AirTags, as well as that Air Power Mat that just apparently is still a thing. And a very, 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 very far off rumor about Apple revealing, or at least giving a nod to its new augmented reality glasses. Now this last one is a real long shot, but I thought I'd throw it in there because it's 2020 and why not? It has gone completely off track so far, so you never know. With that said, we are still planning on covering WWDC 2020 just like any other year here at CNET, so expect a live show from us on YouTube, and we're going to have all the updates on CNET.com from here until the day of the event, so I have a date with you guys on June 22nd. See you then.